want to share with you yeah. and your family, your family. The love of Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. So tune in, tune in, and we will grow together to increase our faith with God. With one touch, ministries, we're touching hearts and changing lives. Things of that nature. 
And so sometimes her car is down and my car is working. Then her, my car is down, her car is working. And then, you know, very rarely do we have both of our cars up at the same time. And thank God nothing has ever happened to keep our fingers crossed and knock on wood and all that other kind of good stuff that neither one of our cars have ever, ever been down at the same time. And so, uh, so this past week, uh, my battery light came on. So this past week, my battery light came on, and I was like, oh, goodness, what is going on? You know, so, but uh, when I went to go turn the car back on, the battery light actually went off. So that's actually happened before. So I said, okay, maybe it's a fluke, but let me just go ahead and go check it out anyway, because, you know, maybe you know, something is actually wrong with the battery. So took it up to the advanced auto place, place and had them check out the car. And so the guy, he was like, well, it looked like that there's a problem. Do you have your receipt? And I said, well, um, usually places like this, I usually get an electronic receipt. So I just have to look through my email. He was like, yeah, he said, anytime you make a purchase, especially when it comes down to, um, you know, you're purchasing things and you have warranties and stuff and things of that nature, not only should you get a physical receipt, but you should get an electronic receipt. So just in case something happens, then you can go back and you can go easily find that receipt. Listen, even take a picture on your phone, save it to your phone, so if, you know, time go past, then you always have that receipt because, you know, you have a warranty on certain items that you get. So, um, you know, years ago, a few years ago, uh, I did buy a battery. Actually, I was building my car back up. I brought a battery and an alternator and everything else. And I brought expensive stuff. And the reason why I brought expensive stuff because I said, well, if something was to happen that there's a warranty on there, I'm guaranteed to get a replacement and get a replacement for free. So for those of you who know cars, you can buy a little cheap battery and you get a one year warranty. Something happens to it, then hey, you take the battery back, you get another battery for free. You get a, the, 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 middle, the middle class, I just say middle class battery, you have that for two years. After two years, you know, hey, something happens to it. Um, then of course, you know, you can get a new one back, guaranteed. You're gonna have another three. So there's one that's three, and I think the last one is like five years. So okay, I don't want the whole total five years, but I think three years, give me about three years. So I went on ahead and I paid extra money to be able to get the uh, larger, uh, the, the battery that should hold more time. Now, for those of you who know, a lot of times when you buy stuff like this, they give you a, a three year warranty and then it seems like that soon as that warranty is up, then something happens. Yeah. Well, I give God praise because this past week, uh, I did get the three-year battery, and what ended up happening is that there was something wrong with the battery, so they had to replace it for free because I had the three-year uh, warranty on the battery because I brought it back in 2020. And so something that I learned this past week, so some of you may or may not know, I started a new job. And so one of the trainers, or one of the leaders um, in the company, he was encouraging, her, encouraging us, and he was telling us a few things. And something that he said that hit me, and I said, wow. So I wrote it down on my little sticky note, and it's still sitting there on my computer today. And I look at it every single day, because the quote that he said was, customers know the price of everything, but know the value of nothing. And so I was like, wow, that's pretty powerful because, you know, uh, the, the duties of my job is to save the customers from leaving the company. If I get customers to be saved from leaving the company, what ends up happening is that I get a commission and maybe all this other kind of stuff on, on that. But we have to be able to uh, show the value of the product. Yes. So I was like, wow, we have to be able to show the value of the product. So a lot of times we go out and go buy the cheap thing because of the price. Yes. Yes. We don't, instead of going ahead and going paying the full price for the more expensive item, 
and say, hey, I'm able to get a warranty, a guaranteed warranty if something was to happen on it. No, let me go ahead and get the cheap thing because I don't, I know the price of everything, but I know the value of nothing. That's it, come on, Pastor. So a lot of times, so now that I'm thinking about this, you know, hey, we, we, we as believers, we know the price. We know that there is a price that has to be paid. We know there's a price that we have to do for ministry. We have, we have to know the price for doing so many other things in life. But we, we don't know the value of this platform. A lot of people call this a stage. I don't like calling it the stage because I'm not entertaining you. That's right. Um, this is a platform, a platform so that I can be able to deliver the word of God to you. That's it. I like that. The, you, you don't know the value of the, when you sow into good ground, a seed that goes to good ground. You just know the money that you're giving, but you don't know the value that's going to come out of that seed that has been sown. So, I'll give you guys a demonstration of what I'm saying. I remember I was just like you. Yeah, I'm talking to somebody. I don't know who's watching me live on Facebook right now, but I'm just here to tell you that I was just like you. I said, Lord, I'm not giving no more money because I'm not seeing because you know you got all these preachers and pastors that say, hey, do this, do that, give this, give that, give da 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 da, -da. because then they'll use God's name so I myself personally, when the Bible says, don't take the Lord's name in vain, I really believe that God was talking about these so-called people that hear from God, and it really not God telling them to sow your seed and give this and give that. And then put God's name behind it. Yeah. It's them taking God's name in vain. And so, God spoke to me years ago. He said, Shannon, do you trust me? I said, yes, I do, Lord. He said, okay, well, this is what I need you to do. I need you to sow a $100 seed. I said, okay, God. He said, do you trust me? I said, yes, God. I said, I trust you. He said, sow us a $100 seed. He said, then after you sow your $100 seed, go to Hooper. He said, go to him. Go, go to the norm. And I need you to go buy him some food. And I said, okay. He said, now, spend $60, but don't tell him to spend $60, but that's how much it's going to come up to. So I said, okay, so I sold my $100 seed at the church that I was at at the time. I went to the, to, went to the Hooper's dorm room, and I said, hey, God spoke to me and said to go buy you some food. Hey, let's go to Walmart, and let's go buy some food. He was like, you sure, Doc? I said, yeah, man, I'm sure. He was like, all right, cool. So we loaded up the car. I took him over to Walmart. He spent $60, went back. And I said, okay, God, I trust you. Mind you, that was a seed yeah. that was sown. Let me also tell you the promise that God promised me. He said, because you were obedient Come on. and you sowed that seed, you will never go home. You will always have a meal. Come on. And this is something that I, I taught my wife as well. I said, honey, I said, we may not have what we want to eat, but we got food. Yes, come on. We may we may have to eat uh, uh, chicken and dumplings every single day, but we got food. We may have to have rice and gravy every single day, oodles and noodles every single day, but we got food. Yes. We may have to do uh, hamburgers and hot dogs every other day, but we got food. Come on. Every day is not going to be steak and potatoes. But we have food. I didn't know the value That's it. of that seed that I sowed. And it's almost been 20 years now. I am still reaping the harvest of the seed that was sown back then. So listen, that's not what I came here to preach about today. That wasn't in my notes. That was just my introduction. And so right here, guarantee. What is a guarantee? A guarantee is defined as a formal promise or assurance and is typically in writing. Yes. That certain conditions will be fulfilled, especially that a product will be repaired or replaced, if not of a specific quality and durability. Come on. A guarantee is a promise or an assurance 
God has given us so many promises and so many assurances that I kind of believe that we don't even believe God no more. Wow. Some, and I guarantee that something that gives a certainty of income. A guarantee is law. A, a formal pledge to pay another person's debt. Or to perform another person's obligation in the case of default. That's a guarantee. Yes. Uh, and, and I'm just giving you just natural definitions. A theme serving as security for a formal pledge to pay another person's debt. So if, if my wife, if my wife went into debt with something, I would say, I guarantee. Now I'm going to pay. Yes. Less common, uh, less common terms of a guarantor for it provides a formal assurance or promise, especially that contains conditions shall be fulfilled related to a product, service, or a transaction. God has given us a guarantee. Yes, He has. Come on. He has, a guarantee is nothing but a promise. Simply put. God has given us so many promises. I'm telling you, and the reason why I said earlier that I don't believe that we believe in God's promises because a lot of people then promised us something and then it fell through. Come on, Pastor Shannon. Some, some of the promises that you may have, have heard, loan me $20 and I'll pay it back. Ah. I, I promise I'm not going to tell another lie. I promise that I'll never leave you. <laughs> I promise that uh, if you if, if you buy it, I'll be the happiest person in the world. Okay. I, I, I bet you if you buy this product right here, it's going to improve your life. And you Bye. never used it. Promise me that you'll never cheat on me again. Whatever. <laughs> Broken promises. The uh uh uh. I would never steal money from you. That's a promise. That's a lot. <laughs> Come on, Patty. You preaching good. The promotion that I promised you. Rest assured, you're going to get it, but just not right now. <laughs> broken promises. Satisfaction guarantee and then as soon as it breaks down, you're going to take the car back and be like, hey, you said satisfaction guarantee. I'm not satisfied. Oh, well, well, that, that, that's not my problem. Come on, Pastor. There's been so many promises. Uh, uh, 10 years or 100,000 miles, whichever come first. Ah, whatever. <laughs> oh, Jesus, stop it. We replace everything from the bumper to bumper, and then what happens is that you read the little, little fine lines that says, well, we'll replace everything except for this, if that's, 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 if you go back, you go take it back. But you said, I was covered 100,000 miles in 10 years, which everyone come first. Well, this happened, and that's not covered under the warranty. That happened, and that's not covered under the warranty. Oh, you forgot to get an oil change, and because you forgot to get the oil change, then that means that that they go under the warranty. Yep. Yep. Have you ever heard any of those statements above? Yes, Lord. And none of them have been fulfilled. None of them. There's always some type of excuse to the reason why people never fill their promises. Thus leaving the next person who actually means well. Nah, I haven't heard that before. That's mm -mm. right. Come on. Nah, I ain't. Uh -uh. That's the reason why it's so hard for us as people because we put our trust and people, we put our trust in things and, you know, it's supposed to be your word is your bond, but a lot of times what people say out of their mouth is fluff. Come on. They be making up stuff. Yeah. And so then, so I'll give a little personal example. I'll give an example of myself. 
take Minister Shannon, take Pastor Shannon personally right now. I always heard as I would go around and I would preach and evangelize, going city to city, oh, state to state, no. all this other kind of stuff. Yeah, I'm going to take care of you. When you get here. <laughs> I'm going to take care of you. Oh, don't worry about it. Preacher, I'm going to take care of you. That's it. I didn't hear I'm going to take care of you so much that don't, 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 even to this day, don't, don't say to me, I'm going to take care of you. Now, I need in details what you mean by you going to take care of me. I need a contract. I need a contract. I need something. I need something in right and guarantee saying, hey, listen, you're going to pay for the hotel. You're going to pay for my travel. You're going to pay for this. You're going to pay for that. I don't want to hear, oh, just get here. Yeah, and I'm going to take care of you. No, because I've had some, some people that have told me in my life, I'm going to take care of you, Doc. Don't worry about it, Doc. doc. I'm going to take care of you, Doc. doc. <laughs> you might have to preach. That Doc spirit. So he, he, even right here, my wife, she laughs at me because every time somebody say, Hey, prophetess, I want you to come come and speak. I want you to come preach. I need to... Uh, my wife would be like, here's the phone. I'd be like, okay, I'm going to take care of you. Okay, this, this this is what you need to take care of. This is what you're going to take care of. That is what you're going to take care of. We'll take care of this. We'll get there. This is... Uh, uh, what, uh, yep, yep, yep. Because I need in detail... What you're going to take care of. Of what you're going to take care of. These kinds of situations, it causes us to not believe in the guaranteed promises that God has given us. That's right. And so now we swing back into the promises of God. And he says in 2 Corinthians 1 and 20, all the promises of God are yes and amen. And so it's hard for us to believe this because we've been let down sometimes. We've been out sometimes. And so people have done certain things to us that, you know, it makes us be able to, uh, it leads us to be able to doubt God. And, and so this causes us to be able to be kind of stand offish a little bit. But I'm here to tell you today that God said that every promise that I have promised you is a yes and an amen. Hallelujah. I need you to type into the comments, yes and amen. And amen. Yes. And amen. Amen literally means so be it. That's it. So every time you say amen to somebody, you say, well, so be it. I don't care if it's good or if it's bad. You can say amen. You say, so be it or let it be so. In the Hebrew, amen means to be reliable. It means it can be trusted. So when God says that all the promises that he's made to you are yes and amen, he said they're reliable. You can trust the fact that God is going to have those things happen for you in your life. So how can we build our hope on faulty promises? How can you have, how can, how have you had faulty promises and faulty hopes and faulty dreams and uh, it seems like that it was real but it wasn't real and it never comes to pass. I'm here standing in faith to tell you today that if you believe God, he's going to do exactly what he said he's going to do. Hallelujah. And my wife said it earlier today that only God could do it. Only God can do the things that he said he's going to do. Only God is going to be able to give you promises and provisions. And so just, uh, uh, so, uh, so let's talk about a few guarantees that God has given us. Yes. Uh, a few guarantees that God has given us. Number one, uh, number one guarantee that he has given us, God is always with me. We don't believe that God is with us. And so in order to, to believe that God is always with me, uh, we also have to know that I will not fear. 
2 Timothy 1 and 7 says, For God, so this is, I, I preached about that when we go through certain situations in life, and this is the reason why we have to read the Bible, is because when we have certain situations in life, we got to know how to combat the devil with the word. Yeah. That's what Jesus did when he was uh, uh, being tested and tried for 40 days and 40 nights. He came back with the enemy and said, Thus saith the Lord, it is written that man shall not live by bread alone. So we have to know how to combat, combat the devil when he uh, comes with us with uh, God, uh, 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 about things of this nature. God, he is always with me, so I will not fear. Second Timothy 1 and 7 says, For God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and love of a sound mind. And so when you feel like that you're being alone and you feel fearful, make sure you go to these scriptures, Psalms 34 and 4 says, I sought the Lord and he answered me and delivered me from all of my fears. Uh, uh, point number two, promise number two, God is always in control. And because God is always in control, you should have no doubt. You should have no doubt. So the Bible says in James 1 and 6, it says, But let him ask in faith, not wavering. For he that waver is like a wave of the sea, driven with the wind and its tossed. And so when, uh, when you ask God for something, you got to make sure that you have faith and trust and never doubt because you don't want to waver in your faith. And so I'm here today to tell you today that child of God, don't waver in your faith because God, he is in control of every situation and circumstance. And Proverbs 3, 5 and 6 says, to trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not to your own understanding, but in all your ways acknowledge him and he will direct your path. So on today, I'm here to encourage you to let you know that God is in control. You need to be able to put that in the comments and say God is in control. My next point here is to tell you that, uh, where are we at here, point number three? Yes. Here we go. Uh, God is always good, so I will not despair. So a lot of times we feel like that, you know, uh, that, 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 that we're lost and we're out in the sea, we're out here by ourselves. But the Bible says in Psalms 41 through 2, I wait patiently for the Lord and he helped me and he turned uh, to me and he heard my cry. He lifted me out of the pit of despair. Some of you feel like that you've been in the pit of despair. Some of you feel like that, you know, you just can't go nowhere. That uh, some so, so people are always talking about me and all this other kind of stuff. But I'm here to tell you today that God is a good God and the devil is a bad, bad devil. And the scripture says, out of the mud and the miry, he set my feet on the solid ground and he allowed me to be able to walk along his side. 2 Corinthians 4, 8 through 9 says, we are, we are experiencing trouble on every side, but we are not crushed. We are not perplexed, but not driven to despair. We are persecuted, but not abandoned. We are not down, and but we're not destroyed always carrying around in our bodies the death of Jesus Christ so that the life of Jesus may also be uh, visible in our bodies. Uh, I know that sometimes uh, uh, we may feel like that we are tossed to and fro and it seems like we get kicked down and out and it seems like that God is not there and it seems like that we always uh, doing just, just in the middle of something. It seems like that I'm trapped between my doom and my destiny. <laughs> my God from Zion. It seems like that there's trouble on every side. When I go to my right, there's trouble there. When I go to my left, there's trouble there. When I look in back of me, there's trouble there. When I look in front of me, there's trouble there. But although we may be troubled on every side, we may be perplexed, but we're not in despair. We are persecuted, but we're not abandoned. We may be knocked down, 
out, but we're not destroyed. So I'm here to encourage you, ladies and gentlemen, on today that God is with you, and God is a good, good God, and the devil is a bad, bad devil. Listen, I'm going on to point number four really quick. It says here, God is always watching. God is always watching. So I will not lack in my confidence. I'm here to tell you today, Deuteronomy 31 says, Be strong and good courageous. Do not be afraid of them. For the Lord your God is the one who goes before you. He will not fail you, nor will he forsake you. Proverbs 3 and 26 says, For the Lord will be your confidence, and I will keep your foot from being caught. Psalms 128 and 8 says, The Lord will perfect those things that's concerning me. O Lord, endure for me, forsaking not the works of thy hand. So when you feel like that God is when you feel like that God is not watching, I'm here to tell you that God is always watching you. God has always been there. And the last point right here is promise number five, that God is always victorious. So you shall not fear. You shall not fail. Philippians 4 and 13 says, I can do all things through Christ that strengthens me. I cry out aloud to God loudly, and I plead to God for mercy. I spill out all of my complaints before him, and I spill out my troubles in details. And so I'm here to tell you today that you don't have to worry, that you don't have to fret, and you don't have to be in fear, because God said that I'm going to be here for you. I never leave you nor forsake you. I've never seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed begging bread. I'm here to let you know that Jesus will work out every situation and every circumstance. And I just love God. Listen, church, I have a message just for you. And it's in his word, and I know it's true. It doesn't matter what you're going through. And I know that the Lord will see you through. But trouble won't let. Hallelujah. Trouble won't last always. And I'm here to encourage you that God, he has everything under control. I'm here to encourage you on today to let you know that you have a guarantee that God is going to do exactly what he says he's going to do. I don't know about you on today, but I know that God has done great things. He's done great things for me, and he should do, he's done great things for you. And I know that God is going to be able to do mighty works for you in your life. I don't know about you, but God has done great things for me. These are the things that you need to know and you got to understand that God has done great things for you. He has a guarantee. He has promises for you. Jesus has given us promises and 60% of the world don't even accept it. But how many believe that Jesus know that there is a heaven and there is a hell? There is a place that God said. Oh, hallelujah. No, God said right there in John, Jesus said that I'm going to prepare a place for you. That's a guarantee. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Take your time, Pastor. Just give me the, the, the deliverance music. Father's house 
our many mansions. If it wasn't so, I would have told you, I prepare a place for you. And if I prepare a place for you, he said, I'm coming back to get you. And so on today, so on today, I really wanted to stress to you guys is that there is a place. I don't know who needs to hear this right now, but there is a place called heaven. And there is a place called heaven. God has guaranteed He said, let not your heart be troubled. The message Bible says, don't let this rally. If you trust God, then trust me. He said, there's plenty of room there. But there's a lot of people who don't believe that there is a place. That there is a place called heaven. There's a place called heaven as well. A lot of people don't believe in heaven and hell. A lot of people believe in heaven, but they don't believe it's hell. They believe that there's hell right here on earth. I'm here to tell you today that this isn't hell. Hell is the place where people go to uh, suffer when you don't live right here, when you have not Accept the Lord Jesus Christ as your, as your Lord and personal Savior. That's what hell is. Your soul goes to a place. It's for the doomed. It's for the damned. It's for Satan and his imps. It's for people who live reckless lives and have no remorse for what they've done. guarantees us this place. And a lot of people don't believe in this place. Then we have weak knee, limp wrist preachers who preach a faulty gospel and always want to give a prophetic word to a believer. The church is not experiencing a real anointing. There is a place for you Satan, he let all of those 
souls that were in Abraham's bosom, he freed them. And then they went to heaven. There is a place. Jesus said, I go to prepare a place for you. And where I'm going, I want you to go with me. I'm here to let you know, everybody who's watching me live, I'm here to let you know, there is no more Abraham's bosom. There is no more Abraham's bosom. If you die and you go to hell, that is it. But today you can be free. This is Freedom Month right here at One Touch Ministries and today we want you to be free. been pastors and preachers and ministers and people who have church, probably church turned you away from church for whatever reason. But I'm here to tell you that there's coming up a new generation of people, of believers who want to be able to disciple you, want you to understand about the Bible, wants you to understand that God really loves you. I can't speak for any other ministry, but I can speak for One Touch Ministries. That's what we found our church on. To allow people to know that they have a real relationship with God. Why? Because it's always been taught that God is this dude way, 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 way up in space somewhere waiting just to slam the hammer down and present judgment. But that's not the God we serve. We actually serve a loving God. He's not ready to judge. You would have all manner of sickness and disease and, you know, things bad to happen to you. No, the Bible says in Jeremiah 29, 11, for I know the plans that I have for you, saith the Lord. Plans of peace. Some of you have been trouble in your mind. I speak peace right now. Plans not to hurt you. That doesn't sound like a God that's waiting to slam the hammer down on you. To give you hope and expect the end in the future. Doesn't sound like an angry God to me. Now mind you, don't want to turn into a hand of an angry God, but that doesn't sound like an angry God to me. There is a place that when you leave this physical earth that you're going to go to, and I'm here to encourage you today that you know without a shadow of a doubt that you're on your way to heaven. Heaven is real. We have people that's there that's waiting for us. Mind you, when you go to hell, you're not going to, you're going to be tormented, tortured. Well, you say, Pastor Shannon, I don't believe the same thing that you believe. Okay, you know, that's fine. But all I got to say is, if I'm wrong, then I sure enough lived a really good life. <laughs> but if I'm right, I want to take the chances on that I'm right. Trumps physical 
knowledge because I know I have a lot of people that they have to know, have that physical or mental knowledge of certain things. But experience trumps all the mental knowledge that you can ever have in your life. I've had experiences, may not have shared them all, but I have had experiences with God the Father. I've had experiences with angels. I've had experiences to know that we live in two different worlds. A natural world that we can see and a spiritual world that we don't see. And inside that spiritual world, there is no gray line. It's good versus evil. There is no gray line. I'm here to tell you today that there is a place that when you leave from here, that God wants you to be a part of. He said, I have guaranteed you 
I want to heal you. I guarantee you, I want to set you free. I guarantee you, I want to save your family members. We just got a testimony this past week. One of our members, they had a family member that accepted Jesus Christ into their life. There is a guarantee that God is going to do exactly what he said he's going to do. If you want to get, get a chance to know this God, if you want to get a chance to know this Savior, if you want to get a chance to know Jesus Christ as your King of Kings and your Lord of Lords, you can inbox me, my wife, or you can also inbox Minister Henry. Let us know. Say, hey, listen. I need to know more about this person named Jesus Christ who has guaranteed me a mansion, who has guaranteed me a room. And let me say this, that's, Jesus already paid the price for it. Do you understand the value of the price? that Jesus paid. Jesus went to Calvary to save a wretch like you and me. Now that's love. We were on our way to hell in a handbasket with a hangnail with a gasoline snuggie on. Jesus came down. He said, I'm going to be the repairer of the breach. He's the repairer of the breach. When we fail, there was a gap between me humanity in heaven. Jesus bridged that gap so that we can freely now come into the presence of God and freely we can go to heaven. Yes. So for those of you who are watching, hopefully there's somebody watching that can listen to this message and say, hey listen, Pastor Shannon, yes, there's been some people that have done me wrong. They have made some promises and, you know, I sure was dependent on those promises. And it led me astray. It led me not to serve God. But on today, I'm here to say, I want to serve God again. So pray this prayer, say, Father God, Father God I, accept I accept you now as my Lord and personal Savior. Father God, forgive me for every single sin that I've committed in my life. Father God, accept me now into your kingdom. I believe in my heart and I confess in my mouth that you are Jesus Christ. That you died for me, you rose again so that I can have eternal life with you. And that you guarantee me that when I die, that I have a home in the sky. I'm going to tell this world goodbye. And I'm going to fly away to be with you in heaven. I thank you, Lord. Satan, you have no dominion, you have no power. Go from me right now. Jesus, I put you on the throne of my life. And it is so. In Jesus' name, amen. Hey, listen, if that was your first time ever praying that prayer, thank you, huh? If that was your first time praying, your, praying that prayer, please get in contact with us. If you just rededicated your heart back to the Lord, get in contact with us. Hey, listen, I believe that One Touch Ministries, we can pastor you right there where you are. 
We meet on every Wednesday night for the remainder of July, and then we're going to take a break in August and come back in September. Next Monday, not this Monday, but next Monday, which is the 25th, all of those who say that I am a member of One Touch Ministries, One Touch Ministries Orlando, One Touch Ministries Kenya, I need to meet you next week, 10 o'clock Eastern Standard Time, 8 o'clock Mountain Time, 5 p.m. if you're in Kenya, Africa. Hey, listen, turn it down on this one. say this. And I'm only going to say this because I don't know if the person is still on or listening. And I don't know if the person commented again, but I saw a comment and I did delete it. Yeah. And I do want to let that person know, if just because they're still watching, then listen, don't be the judge. Because let me tell you something. Before you can take the wood, the log out of somebody else's eye, make sure you take the the make, make sure you before make sure you take the log of uh, the dust out of somebody else's eye. Take the log out of your eye first. I want you to be able to see clearly and know that God is a man that he shall not lie. He shall not be mocked. So I'm here to tell that young man, listen, no hard feelings or anything of that nature, but just know that there is a place. <laughs> yep. There is a place. So if you're big enough, you're bad enough, you're brave enough, Boxes. And we can talk it over. In the name of Jesus. Hey, listen. We're going to get up out of here. It is 5.30. I want you guys to tune in next week because next week we are going to continue this series on the guarantee.